Alright, hey, this is T. I'm back with another video log in my path to programming. Um, this video log is largely for myself as a 52 week record of my progress. So if you watched last week's, it was a lot of setup, like where, I've, where I'm coming from, what my goal is. But uh, maybe you'll find stuff that interests you or helps you too if you're another, be if you're another beginner. Um, so this week's been busy. It's summer, I'm a teacher, so that means that we're doing a lot of family stuff while I have off. Off meaning, you know, unpaid time leave. Uh, but we spent a lot of time at the pool, we spent a lot of time outside, and I've spent time every single day working on my primary goal here, which is teaching myself to program with C-sharp. Um, I've got a couple months of experience with SQL, I've got a couple months of experience with Python, and uh, with Python, I definitely reached the... I fell off the peak of Mount Stupid, had to go back, backed up, changed courses, got frustrated, worked through it, and I had started to pick up the slope of enlightenment. And it was it was that moment as I was reading about what are the best ways to pursue my particular goals, which is developing um, desktop applications for teachers, to support and empower teachers to refine and use data to drive instruction. Um, that I realized I was possibly climbing the wrong slope. Not that Python's bad, not that Python is an inappropriate tool for the task, but that working primarily with Windows where Python is not natively installed and having a lot of restrictions about what we can install, it seemed potentially easier to me to take what I learned in Python and capitalize on that in order to pursue C Sharp with something like Windows Form or Windows Presentation Foundation, WPF, in order to build the same types of applications. Uh, those are words and ideas that six months ago I would not have understood at all. I would have been like, Python is a networking language, I think, maybe, and C Sharp is for video games. Uh, but now I know better. And the more that I've learned, the more I've been able to refine the queries that I put into Google or that I put into Stack Overflow or that I put into Reddit, where sometimes I go to get some advice. Uh, and the more clear that that path is becoming. I have no interest in changing my career. What I want to do is empower teachers. I want to empower educators to be able to use the data that they collect in their context in order to refine their own model of teaching. And while I really enjoyed writing Python, it's very simple, it doesn't take very much to get up and running. I know from having tried to utilize it for my own applications that I built at work that that's very tricky. Um, so I'm hoping C-sharp's a better fit. If nothing else, I'm having a blast doing it. So uh, this week I did a whole bunch of things. Primarily, and this is kind of going on in the background, I installed Ubuntu on a spare terminal that I had kicking around the house. Uh, so I'm learning to use Linux, learning to use the command line terminal and PowerShell a little bit more. Uh, and I'm enjoying it. I, I like this. I am now completely sold on the start bar on the left. <coughs> Excuse me, weirdly enough. Um, I don't know about the whole freedom aspect. Like, is this more freeing? I don't know. I know there's a lot more that I can do with it, but... I may be too inexperienced to understand the shape of my new cage. So for now, it's just a facelift for a lagging, failing terminal that could barely run the version of Windows that was forced on it. Um, so I'm getting significantly better performance out of this old terminal. It's an old call center terminal that I, that I got for free. So uh, we're doing Ubuntu. I'm actually programming with C Sharp on Ubuntu because it's cooler in the basement. And when I'm when I'm working, usually the girls are asleep, so I come down here so that I'm quiet and I can focus. Um, but that's that's pretty neat. In C Sharp though, which has been the focus of all of my programming for the last two and a half weeks, other than trying to process problems in Python when I don't know how to do them in C Sharp. Um, I really focused on loops, I focused on conditional statements, I focused on switch case, uh, and really variable flow throughout an application, or control flow throughout an application. So that means I've been writing a lot of if, else, if, and else statements in order to like manipulate values. Um, a lot of switch case statements, like I built a, a very simple um, uh, nutrition facts, I don't know 
server. That's not that's not the right word, but basically, user types in a type of fruit, and then based on that input, it will pull up the nutritional facts for that piece of fruit. Um, the the learn.microsoft, which I'm going to come back to in a second, the learn.microsoft thing had me doing that for employee ID numbers, but I ended up using it to do different fruit facts. Uh, we built we're, we're building or expanding on the pizza ordering application that we built in Python. I'm doing it in C Sharp and adding more features because I know more now and I can kind of maneuver my way around a little bit. Um, for loops are alarming at first. It's something that's pretty new to me and I want to come back to this problem in a little bit, but I'm getting them now. Before it was totally, I could not do it. Uh, and this happened with, with the for loops in Python too, which is, they're very different things between the two languages. Um, but I, I remember I was so baffled in Python, frustrated even, that the instructor had given me an explanation of what a for loop did and then immediately tossed me an exercise that I couldn't do because I just didn't get it. And that actually happened last year in July when I was trying to learn C Sharp in order to get to Unity. I blitzed it, I rushed it, I was not prepared, and I was turned loose to do an exercise with a for loop that was really just an incrementing exercise and I was so bewildered and so flustered and so frustrated that I quit. So I went from the peak of Mount Stupid thinking like, I got this, I understand how ifs and thens work because I get basic logic anyway, I understand switch cases and, and I can do while loops, that makes a lot of sense to me kind of intuitively, and then I hit that f and it was like the wall. And I quit. That's what it was. So uh, this time I've really, really taken my time to make sure I've got, I understand variables, I understand flow, I understand scope, I understand uh, methods and how methods are both written and called. I had worked really hard to understand the for each loop, to understand arrays, which that when I was 18, I hit arrays in Java. It was really my first and for a long time only attempt to learn to program. The resource that I had didn't make any sense, and I just was like, I'll do other things. And I regret that a lot now. I should have been doing this before, because I actually enjoy sitting and working on it. Um, this time, arrays, easy. Tuples, lists, dictionaries in Python. It took a little bit in C Sharp as they introduced them. It's flying. I'm getting it. But I'm very careful not to go too quickly, because I understand, to some degree, I am at the peak of Mount Stupid right now in C Sharp. I can write a console app that does basic things, but if I have to get into GUIs or any kind of web stuff or navigating the terminal, uh, I'm lost and it sucks. So I'm aware I'm probably on the edge of sliding into the Valley of Despair because I, re I recall this happening very clearly last year. So I'm trying very hard. So my, my, my learning pathway right now is kind of complicated. It's maybe a little bit over convoluted, but it's working because I'm able to roll into what I'm doing. It, it also helps to have a, you know three or four months of practice with Python and Foundations and SQL to support integrating new knowledge. So, so right now, everything that I do gets consolidated into this bullet journal notebook that I picked up. It was two bucks at Walmart. I've taken almost, I don't know, I'd say 35 pages of notes on what different things do, and I'm interpolating my explanations down from multiple other resources, not just copying word for word, but looking at two or three different resources and then interpolating that into my notes. And when I have to do a task or an application, I have to come back to my notes. I don't let myself go back to the, the text unless it's the official C-sharp C documentation. I don't rewatch the video to get hints. I come back to my notes, and if I can't figure it out from my notes, then I have to go over to the C-sharp documentation and figure it out over there. So aside from this, I've got learn.microsoft, which I'm going to put up here because I said I was going to come back and talk about it. Um, this is my pathway, <clears throat> which I'll come back to in a second. I've got the C Sharp Ultimate Masterclass on Udemy. I've got C Sharp Player's Handbook, 5th edition by R.B. Whitaker. And then I've also got Pro C Sharp, I think. 
Uh, it's a secondhand copy. So I've got a number of resources, and what I do is when I'm looking at a topic or a topic comes up that I know nothing about, I look at that topic in three or four of those resources, or maybe even all of them, because one teacher is not going to fit you for every single thing you're trying to learn. You need multiple resources to build this schema. And for people who aren't really informed about how learning works at a neurological level, I will come back to that in a second because that is an area that I am comfortable with. So <clears throat> very quickly, I just want to show off learn.microsoft because I was blown away when I realized that this thing was sitting here and that I neglected it. I didn't even know about it last year. Learn.microsoft is Microsoft's learning platform. A lot of companies have these if you look for them. Unity has one, Unreal has one, uh, Cisco has one. <coughs> Excuse me. And they're just sitting there. It's free training. Sometimes it even leads to a certification if that's something that you're pursuing. Like the Learn.Microsoft one for C Sharp, this ties directly into, I think, Free Code Camp. You get a certification upon completion. Now, I'm not changing my career, so am I going to take those extra steps? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It's going to depend on which way the wind blows. But for someone who's really trying to change their career, it's a free certification if you get through this. And this is, it's written very simply. It's crazy that this isn't something that I see being pushed more on, on like Reddit. You know, when I'm, when I'm reading beginners, it, there are great recommendations there, but here is a free, guided, self-paced, beginner-friendly, text-oriented learning platform. And I'm into, you can see how many things I've completed so far. These are modules. Modules are usually multiple articles and exercises tied together. Um, I've completed these one after another. Microsoft has already gone through and sequenced these. So something like this one that I'm on right now, this, this is seven modules. It takes six hours and 21 minutes to complete. That's not true. Some of this stuff takes me way longer than what they anticipate because I can slow down and really take my notes, double check my other resources. I'm under no pressure to complete these. But this is this is a course. There are entire Udemy courses that have run times of this and it's free. You know, so this is the one that I'm working on right now. This is uh, adding logic to C sharp console applications. This is part three and it tells you Here's what you need to understand in order to dive into it. Maybe you don't need to start from the beginning, but it tells you what it is that you're going to be working on as you work through them. So this week, for the last couple days, I did Booleans. Booleans were easy. That's something I remember from high school, right? Uh, but controlling variable scope and understanding how where you declare a variable matters, that was huge. I didn't, I didn't understand that. Um, I mean, I got it in Python, but it's trickier in C Sharp. There, there are more things I need to be aware of because I kept trying to just return var variables but I can't always do that um, branching the code flow using the switch case I could do that in Python although I didn't use it very often but here I've got a 34 minute module and in it these are all the different things that are going on this is just sitting there for free you know it's great so right now I'm, I'm this is the continue button I started doing the for loops and so this morning I read my introduction I did the first exercise which said 14 minutes, I think that took me about an hour to get through because I really had to look closely at this stinking for loop to get it. It was really driving me nuts um, because it's different than the Python for loop. And I spent cognitive energy understanding the, the Python for loop, and that took me a couple hours. You know, So it's got the same name. Wouldn't expect it to be very challenging, but it is. And then there's an exercise to try it, there's a review, there's a knowledge check, which is a quick quiz, and a summary where they go back over the major topics. This is invaluable as a resource. And oftentimes they link directly to the documentation for C Sharp, so I'm getting used to it. So it brings me back to this Dunning-Kruger effect, right? I realize that I am kind of a know-nothing idiot right now when it comes to C Sharp when it comes to Python, when it comes to computer programming in general. But every day that I practice, I'm going to be carrying this ball forward, even when I start to hit things that are outside my scope, my zone of proximal development again. That effect is important. So here's where we get into the neurology of learning. And I'm bringing this up because I talked to another Python beginner the other day, and, uh, and this came up. But basically, 
your brain is a schematic network of pattern matching and memory retrieving and sensorium micro components, right? That's a gross simplification, but different parts of your brain do different things. One of the problems that I see in new coding courses, beginner coding courses, is that there is an unspoken or unarticulated pressure to get through the beginning stuff because it seems like it should be baby work. But what's really happening is if you have no real grasp on the concepts that are being reviewed or being introduced, your brain doesn't have those structures built out yet. And learning is a complicated, resource intensive, cortical process. It's not something that you can just get and click. When you feel that initial, like, I've never seen this before, but I just get it, one of two things may be happening. Either you do have background knowledge and you did make that connection, or your forebrain executive got it. It can hold it there, but it can't hold it in long-term memory. And that feeling is what happens when you see someone do something or you grasp something you feel like you got it immediately, then the next day you come back and you're like, wait, what happened? I thought I got this. That's because your executive functions were able to get and utilize it, but it hasn't sunk into the rest of your brain yet. So looking at this Dunning-Kruger effect from a neurological perspective or, or a cognitive psychological perspective, that valley of despair is what's happening when you hit a enough of a challenge that you don't have the schematic network developed to sort these things out. It's not routinized. You might be able to do it with a guide where it's very executive driven, but you don't have a full brain context yet for whatever that thing is. And if you do what I did last year and you quit the valley of despair, you don't keep sending the smoke signals to your brain saying, this is important, I need you to direct resources to it. And I knew better last year. This is not new learning to me. This is how I guide teachers to think about the learning process. It's how I guide students to think about the learning process. I was just lazy. This year, I'm not lazy. We're going to have 50 more of these logs as I record my progress across the year. And I'm going to go through that valley of despair. That's going to happen. I don't know when. I think it's going to happen soon. I'll come back to that in a second. But it's probably going to happen. And I'm going to do my best to document how I get through it how I muscle my way through it. Because what's happening physiologically is when you hit that valley of despair, your brain starts to notice this is really hard and your behavior determines whether or not you are going to stick with that thing. It's gonna determine whether or not your brain is going to apply the resources to build the schematic network and actually develop your comprehension at a physiological level. If you quit like I did, if you walk away, if you decide, you know what, this is hard, I'm gonna slow down my pace to once a week or once once every couple of weeks, you're not going to upregulate that thing that needs to be developed. So you have to go through the valley of despair. You have to just go, this is part of the learning process. It's challenging, it's borderline painful in some cases, and oftentimes it's exactly what you need. So Marcus Aurelius said, the thing that stands in the way becomes the way. The obstacle is the way, right? The valley of despair has to be gone through, but it doesn't need to be gone through alone. So that's where you start to diversify your resources, start looking at what other teachers or other instructors or other courses or other resources have to say start reaching out to a network of people, whether it's Reddit or Stack Overflow or whatever your discord of choices for the language that you're learning, that's where you have to go get help to get you through the valley of despair. So knowing this, I went in like an actual professional this time and I already have a tool belt full of diverse resources. I've already started offloading my long-term memory into my notes. I'm already starting to build up a network of people that I can talk to and ask questions about this kind of stuff. And the goal is not to avoid the valley of despair, but to make it productive. So that's the neurology aspect. Learn.Microsoft is great. 
but it really only goes up to beginner stuff for C-sharp, and that's where my other resources are going to come in for pushing my ability to get to where I want to go. That plateau of sustainability where I can be working on an education app to empower teachers at my own pace in addition to my typical workload in order to make other people's lives easier. So one of the things that I have to do that is this idea that we built up or that I built up with some other teachers to work with kids. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa, why is that upside down? Woo, your text here. I have never used this before. So we have hard, and we're talking here about tasks. Oh boy, how do I just move you? We have hard. We have easy. I've done this before, but I thought it was going to be simpler than this. Joke's on me. Right, this is how we tend to think about tasks. Things are easy, they're hard. We want to move things to the easy side, right? But there's another dimension here. Simple, meaning routine. Nope, oh, come here. And then there's also complex, non-routine. And I'm avoiding multi-step versus many steps because that language gets confusing. But what we have is the learning pathway that most people go through. Things are easy, but as they get more hard, they also get more complex. And as they get more complex, they get harder, right? However, simple, easy, simple routine things, they feel relatively easy. So we have this kind of pathway. Things get easier the more that they get routine. What we want to do is take any given task, like a for loop, which feels complex because there are six steps involved, and it feels hard because it's intimidating, and we want to break that down into as many routine steps as we can. Some of these might be harder, some of them might be easier, like using parentheses. And over time, as they get more routine, we want them migrating this way. That's the learning theorem that I'm working on that as I break things down from complex and I make them more routine through practice, they will also get easier so that I can then offload that and I can start to do easy things that are complex. They're not routine, but they're easy because I understand the components. This is generally how I try to learn things using this framework. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't, but uh, it works when I've tried to, come to explain complex topics like, you know, orthography, morphology, etymology, uh, the construction of a longer writing piece, how to work with classroom management, how the brain works. Um, this is the framework that I use for myself, it makes sense to me. So hopefully it's useful, this video log is useful to somebody, uh, I know I'll be watching them myself probably in a couple months. <coughs> I don't know why my throat's so dry. But uh, that's it. I went out way longer than I intended to in this one. Um, 20, 24 minutes, good lord. So, there's a video log for week two. I learned a bunch. Ubuntu, for loops, logic, conditional, switch case, and uh, a little bit of cognitive psychology. So, that's it.